Yo, this is Zeladino representing for Rasquasi and the whole Lion Vice family. Now, listen, this, this is the realest thing. Him closer to me than a brother. Him and me, Jimmy, I tell him I'm a lion. Me, I go tell you how me feel. Me, I go keep it real. Me, I go wait till him lay down on the mark. Lion Vice never talk bad about me yet. Him realness, me can't forget. Cause when I give him time, him never bench me. Him never rise up against me yet. No, the friendship connect. It's funny how we can talk in front of a million people and never yet drop no catch. So I loyalty till death. Lion Vice, a Zeladina representing. Up, up, up. Lion Vice. But what I'm realizing as you know, I mature in the faith is that there's a lot of loosey goosey things going on. What do I mean? That means this the thing is too slack. And I wanna respect every Rasta out there, but I don't consider myself Rasta. I consider myself Rastafari. You know, because we have to the, the, to, to I that is the standard. The standard set by his Imperial Majesty Emperor Elisla say the first. And I always tell people I see Rasta do things I never see his Imperial Majesty Emperor Elisla say the first, um, formerly known as Rastafari do. So we really take Rastafari as the standard. We are his people. We shall be called by his name. Well, Lion Vice, tell them that's the people first choice. Lion Vice, make the lion let them feel nice. Lion Vice, be the lion comes with sacrifice. Lion Vice, got to show the people them the life. Well, lion Vice. Greetings in that divine name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie the First, glory and honor in the name of His Chosen Queen, Empress Waziro Menen. My name is Kwasi Bansu, aka the Chasmach Kwasi, aka Ras Kwasi, aka the Reading Ras, aka the Pan African Happy Man. I'm an entertainment attorney, I'm an author, I'm an actionist, I'm an author, and today I sit before you as the host of the Lion Voice vlog. All right, but before we get into today's topic, I just want to thank everyone who has been supporting the channel, who has subscribed, who has shared the channel, who has left a comment, the comments, all of that help with the algorithm and it gets uh, recommended to more people. We have very slow growth, but I understand that I have to earn your subscription your viewing, all of these things um, are necessary for any content creator. So I give thanks for the journey and we want to build organically. We haven't started doing any marketing yet that will come, but we're really perfecting the craft, getting the product together. So I want to thank all of you who have been with us on that journey, faithful who have been sending DMs, who have been, um, you know, just showing your support. Before we get into today's episode, I want to just do a little bit of housekeeping. I was just at the launch of the Kwaku Ando Sustainability Institute in the Volta region in Ghana. You can see I'm wearing my Kazi shirt um, today, representing the Habisha, the Habisha family. And I was sitting uh, on the land and I've been thinking about a topic for some time now. I think now is the perfect time. We're working on the Kazi launch episode. We're gonna have a little bit of a lead up to that, planning some nice, uh, we got some nice footage, exclusive interviews, you know how we, we deal with the thing. So we're gonna um, show you the whole launching of this historic um, institute that Habisha has created for healing uh, black people in the diaspora and black people at home from the ravages of the transatlantic and Arab slave trade and colonialism. A sacred space I think is one of the first of its kind, historic. <clears throat> but while I was sitting on this property watching the launch unfold, I'm thinking yes, it's good that we have these spaces which I can say 
it's heaven on earth you know the manifestation of it when you go to the land you sit on the land you see the food growing the organic food forest the permaculture grove the bamboo um, sanctuary all of the amenities that Kazi has to offer I'm here thinking about I and I own uh, people are my own walk what am I talking about I'm talking about Rastafari which leads me to today's topic today's topic is really the Rastafari man standard uh, we can have heaven on earth all we want but if we don't create a standard then it's gonna be no different than the country clubs of today which yes they are beautiful but the people in them plan wickedness against the inhabitants of the earth a lot of these uh, places that the wealthy inhabit with no care so we really have to cultivate a standard among those who say they are conscious and in particular I'm Rastafari so I want to talk to the Rastafari family today about this standard um, what I'm realizing and this is the lion voice remember this is the lion voice but what I'm realizing as you know I mature in the faith is that there's a lot of loosey-goosey things going on what do I mean that mean this the thing is too slack and I want to respect every Rasta out there but I don't consider myself Rasta I consider myself Rastafari you know because we have to the, the, to, to I that is the standard the standard set by his Imperial Majesty Emperor Lissalasse the first and I always tell people I see Rasta do things I never see his Imperial Majesty Emperor Lissalasse the first um, formerly known as Rastafari I do so we really take Rastafari as the standard we are his people we shall be called by his name so I want to set a standard I've been trotting Rastafari now over 20 years in the physical it's an inborn concept so I've been Rastafari from birth but in terms of the manifestation you know the leaving out of the barbershop all of these things has been over 20 years and in that 20 years, I've been blessed to be one of the frontline warriors um, in the Washington, D.C. area, in the United States of America, uh, in Jamaica, and in Africa. So, you know, I've, uh, and Toronto, because I've I had some interaction, but very little interaction um, with the Rastafari community in Toronto. But, you know, I, I can safely say that I'm a globally known virgin within the Rastafari Chad um, <clears throat> based on the works over the years and what I've noticed again is that over time we see a lot of the central tenants being watered down being confused we see the hippie hippie um, type of uh, lifestyle that is being introduced confused with Rastafari so they confuse um, burning Babylon with no order or that <clears throat> because you burn Babylon means that it's a free-for-all you do what you feel like this is where the loosey-goosey come in and I can't support loosey-goosey because if you're a lion you can't be a goose and you can't be loose simple so I want to just livicate this episode to introducing a Rastafari standard for the man because the only way we're going to rise to our true potential is for the man them to set the standard resurrect the Rastafari family find a queen and to build these kingdoms while we step out of Babylon jungle that is critical um, without that there's no nation building so the men have to be accountable and that's one of the things I really wanted to do with this channel and that is what this episode so we might step on some toes this episode it might hurt a little bit are you a rent a dread you might feel away are you a boogie dread you might feel away and who are the boogie dreads respect the boogie dreads too let me let me just say that we have to respect the boogie dread the boogie dread is higher than the renter dread because the renter dread is like a prostitute to be honest the boogie dread you know them man they, they have locks them just like to party dance up and down dress up 
locks for them is like long hair. So we call them boogie dread. Them boogie. Um, <clears throat> nothing wrong with that because people have to live. But don't confuse that with Rastafari Chad. Then you have the Rootsman then. Rootsman, um, they like the roots and the culture, but they're not necessarily dealing with this Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie the first. They like the culture, they might like the colors. Um, but these men are not holding themselves to this Ivine standard. But them is rootical still. So we have to distinguish and define who is Rastafari. Um, right now, big up the association of Rastafari Creatives, ARC. Um, we have a Rastafari is campaign right now where we have 10 distinct points that define what Rastafari is. And very critical, uh, go over to Rastafari Creatives. Um, IG if you want to stay in tune with that and see some of those um, things and I think the latest uh, one that we had is Rastafari's repatriation so there are certain tenets once you say Rastafari that are non-negotiable but one of the key for the Rastafari man standard that I plan to reason about is leadership Rastafari man them have to be leaders all right, so let's get into the Rastafari man standard. Um, these tenets are taken from a speech of His Imperial Majesty to the U University um, College of Addis Ababa. Uh, it's in the selected speeches. It's a famous speech. Most Rastafari know it, but we want to dive deep because these are the standards for the Rastafari man. If you're going to lead a family, lead an organization, lead a community, you have to have these standards. If you want to take the name Ras, and let me just say, um, when I came into the faith, the elders that I was there, they called I Ras Kwasi. They gave I that title. I didn't call myself that. That was the name bestowed upon I, you know, just within the trad. I gave myself the title of the Chasmach um, when I started to study because I realized there are stages and critical <clears throat> to this chart is that we need a rites of passage. This is part of Ayman legacy that I plan to leave within this chart is the creation of a, of a cohesive rites of passage. Um, at a minimum for the Naya Bingi order, but something that is applicable to all who are called by his name because I believe, again, the standard is Rastafari. He went from Lidge to the Chasmach to Ras to Negus to Nagus and Nagas. So this is an evolution. Each one carries distinct roles and responsibilities. But we're going to talk about the overall standard, the overarching standard by which every man must hold himself because overall it's about leadership. 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 So if you're a man, get your pen and paper. We're going to go one by one. First, a leader must seek effective activity which has a truly beneficent purpose he inspires others to fall in his wake and holding a love to torture free of wisdom leads the way for society to really realize its genuinely great aspirations <clears throat> so that means we talked about purpose over pum pum and the discipline your purpose you know we talk about as a man, you must first seek the Almighty. Once you seek and build that relationship with the Almighty, then you have to know the purpose. What are the unique skills? What do you bring to the table in service to the Mosai? What gifts has He given you that you can employ to further His aim? And in this instance, the aim is uh, heaven on earth, peace on earth, rising the standards of living of the peoples of earth. This was the mission of His Majesty, the unification of Africa. The unification of the diaspora these are lofty goals so how do i fit into this wider purpose a true leader <clears throat> is going to seek effective activity so that don't mean you're just busy up and down and not now get accomplished they're seeking effective activity that has a truly beneficent purpose so make sure that whatever activity you're doing is benefiting the, the, the genuinely great aspirations of society that is key for leadership because you want a woman to follow you you want to be the head of the home 
then you must have a, a destination that you plan to take that is worthy and dignified. So that's one. <clears throat> Two, <clears throat> a leader is marked out by his individual craftsmanship, his sensibility and insight, his initiative and energy. What does this mean? Individual craftsmanship is key. What are you good at? What are you spending your 10,000 hours learning? How are you bringing and, and cultivating your unique skill set? Then you have to have the sensibility and insight to utilize it. So it's not just the acquisition of the skill set, but how do you use? You have to have sensibility and insight. And then you have to have initiative. Don't wait for someone to call you and say, Bridget, make we do something now. You start do something so you can link up with others while you're doing your work like-minded and energy you have to be fit um, you can't come to this chat daddy daddy a lot of people think Rastafari are going to get up in the morning smoke two spliff take two nap listen to some music and then go up on a little hustling hour two hustling and then come in smoke some spliff and sleep no his majesty work sun up to sundown very little sleep three hours of sleep our meditation you know works going on we don't have to be excessive but work ethic should be the hallmark if you call yourself Ras you call yourself Rastafari then I should be able to see your resume your work should be clear I shouldn't have to doubt what your works are or try to figure out what your works are it should be clear Rastafari man standard. We are gonna hurt some feelings, but it's needed because in order for us to build Zion, the builders have to refine themselves. Three. This leads us to three. Three. A leader must raise the standards by which they judge themselves and by which they are willing to be judged. The goal chosen, the objective selected, the requirements imposed are not merely for the followers alone. So if you're a leader, you always have to be raising the bar by which you judge yourself. What was good last year, yes, you get through with it, but you cannot do that. You know, with Habisha, let's use Habisha for example. Certain things that we used to do when we were grassroots, now that the organization has grown, we have to refine that. It's, we have to go through a lot of things right now um, that require us to be even more vigilant than we may have been in the early days when we were just trying to get the work done and we were happy just to get the work done. Now, cross every T, dot every I, elevate the trod. More eyeballs are on you, you have to elevate. So raise your standard and also don't just delegate and think, no, whatever your standard is, is for you and not just people who follow you. Um, four. A love of high quality, we must remember, is essential in a leader. So you have to cultivate a love of high quality. Don't go for the shortcut or the easy. If you want quality, um, you have to reach for the best. And that is, the, again, the Rastafari standard. Don't come with no shabby thing and say, boy, we born Babylon, but we are bringing some shabby thing. No, our thing have to be nice and clean and luxurious because his majesty is royal when you go to the palace the palace royal top top of the line you know i was flying ethiopia airline when you look on the ethiopia airline first class the thing nice so we want that standard of love of high quality is crucial number five is critical dependability is another requirement in a leader to be dependable is to be willing to accept responsibility and carry it out faithfully. How many people can say they're dependable? If you're not dependable, you're not treading Rastafari. And you can fall short of the glory, but it cannot be a consistent character trait that you that you are not dependable. When ones are calling on you, do they have to follow up on you or are you there uh, ready and willing to get the work done? Again, initiative, part of that, we talked about that earlier, but dependability, crucial. And with that comes number six, a leader must train himself out of any inordinate fear of making mistakes 
A leader is always willing to take counsel from his people, but will have to act what his own mind tells him is right. So as a leader, sometimes people not going to see what you see, but you have to move and make it happen. This is crucial. Uh, seven, devotes his, a leader devotes his thoughts and attention to the well-being of subordinates, of his subordinates and the perfection of his task rather than being constantly worried about the approval or disapproval of others. So you can't watch no fears. You have to execute because at the end of the day as a leader, the responsibility falls on you. So there is a need for you to move forward. Once you know you're doing the right thing, you can't worry about pleasing people. That's one of the easiest ways to please no one is to try to please everyone. That is key. Eight is probably one of the most important. He who would be a leader must pay the price in self-discipline and moral restraint. This entails the correction and improvement of personal character, checking of passions and desires, and an exemplary control of one's bodily needs and drives. A good leader, and there is sub subheadings of that. So basically, again, purpose over. That's something there. D, discipline. These are key in leadership, making sure that you're disciplined, all of your passions and desires that you may have that can keep you astray from the mission, you have to check them thing there. And it says a good leader is devoted to his work and willing to forego even the demands of sleep to see his accomplishment. This does not mean he's impetuous. On the other hand, he maintains a balance between emotional drive and sound thinking. So whatever the task needs, sometimes you have to do the all nighter, but that shouldn't be all the time because it's a law of diminishing returns. But you have to train yourself that you got to complete the task. When the task needs to get done, get it done. Don't make excuses. Push yourself um, and you will see the results over time. His Majesty said that his labors, which sometimes appear excessive, derive from his firm realization that unless a man undertakes more than he can possibly do, he will never to be, be able to do all he can do. It is his enthusiasm that stimulates his energy. A lot of people say, Russ, oh, you do so much. But again, this has been one of the things that inspired me from when I was a young Russ. Unless you take more than you can possibly do, you'll never be able to do all that you can do. So I know when my days come to rest, I don't have to doubt, did I do everything I could do? Because everything that I'm passionate about, I'm literally doing it right now in life. So, you know, I've put systems around all of those things that um, I have that enthusiasm that stimulates my energy. But I'm doing as much as I possibly can. That's why you see the moniker, attorney, author, artist, actionist, woolly putting that and you go to the website, you see Woolly Pa Thing, Woolly Pa Production, books, music, uh, legal practice, uh, you know, sitting on the boards of, of different nonprofits, giving forward to the community. Uh, this is also how you avoid sin and shame, you know, by keeping busy. It says the devil loves, um, has work for idle hands. So if your hands are not idle, the devil has. It's very hard, it's a lot harder for the devil to penetrate because you're always doing something positive. So that's a key one. A nine, leaders are trained in the art of self-discipline and obedience. He who has not learned to render prompt and willing service to others will find it difficult to win and keep goodwill and cooperation of his subordinates. So one of the other key things in doing a lot of things, in everything I'm doing, I'm not the leader for everything that I'm doing. Some things I'm going to serve as a supportive role and somebody else is there to take the lead. So it's important to surround yourself. And by serving and seeing how other leadership styles, I get to improve my own leadership um, style. So it's not always about being at the head of everything that you're doing because you're not going to be the greatest leader. You have to train yourself to serve because ultimately a leader is a servant. Um, and the greatest leaders were servants of the most high. So it's important to know that. Number 10, 
A leader must possess initiative. Um, is my see defines initiative as a creative ability to think in new ways and do new things. A leader must always stay ahead. He cannot afford to set up a procedure and fold his hands and linger lazily watching it work. He cannot be content to merely see new trends and then take advantage of them. He must keep his imagination vividly alive so as to originate ideas and start trends. So this is crucial. Um, again, you hear how many times the word initiative comes up. This is crucial for a leader. Um, the time is gliding and we know it's moving faster than ever. So as leaders, as Rastafari, um, as a Rastafari man, this is, the, this is the baseline for any leadership. So if you are holding these principles, then you are going to be in a position to lead a family lead an organization, uh, lead a project, whatever um, level of leadership that you are at currently in your trot, and there's leadership opportunities for everyone. If you're a janitor, if you're a plumber, if you're an attorney, you're a doctor, there's always um, room for leadership. So these are the principles, the basic principles. We have to start to separate the weed from the tears. Not everybody who says, um, or comes in the form of Rastafari is Rastafari. Again, we respect every Rasta man, we respect every roots man, we respect the renter dread, we respect the boogie dread, we respect all of the dread then. But Rastafari must stand separated. It's a higher chad. We're passionate about the chad, so we have to set that standard. Um, am I talking foolishness? If you're a Rastafari sound, below in the comment. Do you agree that Rastafari man have to declare a standard? And there has to be a rites of passage and a certification process before people can even use the name Ras. Because I see all type of people using the word Ras. I see the Chaz match now starting to get popular. Um, we want to make sure that there's a standard for the people who are taking up these names because I want to be able to go out and if I meet a man and his name Rasso and so me know same as a solid brother. Right now, you know, the man could be talking about liberty but him have a whole heap of skeleton in him closet. And if this is a liberty and we are living Rastafari, you can't be living with skeleton. So we need to know who is who among us? The wheat and the tears shall go together until the time of harvest. Right now, a harvest time. We see we have Kazi has been built, heaven and earth. It's manifesting. There are other sites like Kazi springing up in different places. Um, big up to all of the Rastafari who are creating these safe spaces around the world. All of the Pan-African who are creating these spaces that we are able to heal and to return to. But as we build Zion, as we shape the alternative to Babylon, what is the standard? What is the criteria for entry? You know, to pass the angels, them at the gates. How are we going to determine the lion from the wolf, from the hyena, from the snake? Whatever we do, it's clear that the time has come for the lion to tell his own story. And this is the lion voice. Lion voice. Well, for unto us a son was born and a child was given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called the Wonderful, Counselor, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Then we call him. Christopher I, when he was born, rain fall from the sky. Them call him Christopher I, when he was grown in your plains he fly. They call him Christopher I, a young break the chain, weep not, don't cry. Them call him Christopher I, read the Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. Then 
Born near the city of Harar, the inspiration for Bob Marley's guitar. People crowd him like some big superstar. It no matter if a England or Cote d'Ivoire, no matter if you're brown or black like a tar. Highly Selassie, Sefi, and all tribal paradigm. Fi gather Mount Zion, fi drive solar car from the car straight to Zanzibar. Who we are? The sons of Mr. Farai. When he was born, rain fall from the sky. Mr. Farai, when he was grown in airplanes, he fly. Mr. Farai, the lion break the chain, we not don't cry. Mr. Farai, we do revelation, chapter 5, verse 5. 